While you in the first five seconds of the video, go ahead, like and subscribe. So he's talking about dealing with you, learning what your nationality is, right? So we know as time went by, give me uh, Jeremiah, you know what, read what you got. I'm going to tell you where he left off. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 1 and verse 3. Read. The ox knows his owner. So we know right there that an ox is considered to be a dumb animal, but yet it knows who its owner is. Read. And the ass, his master's crib. And the donkey. Now we all know a donkey is stubborn and everything on the planet, but yet it knows where it's from and where it lives. Read. But Israel does not know. So what it's saying is that we don't know who we are or where we came from, which is why earlier you said what, African American? African American, you know you're an Israelite, which means what you're learning right now. Tribe of Judah. Tribe of Judah. See, so he's starting off learning. But we don't know who we are. All right, we as a people, you know what our problem is? We learn how to get real comfortable in bad situations, right? We learn how to get comfortable. We learn how to just be like, oh, forget it. None of it matters. It doesn't matter. But we don't know who we are as a people. But guess what? God left history that corresponds with actual world history so that in a day like today, we can identify who we are. And I'm going to prove that. Give me uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28. And we're going to go, let, let's start at, uh, go to 68. So you both familiar with the transatlantic slave trade, right? Now, we know some people walking around saying, well, that didn't happen, that ain't real. But guess what? It's world history. Just recently, and they had a meeting, the United States and China. And so the United States was bashing China about their, their, their humanity laws, right? Oh, you're treating people terrible. What you doing to the Muslims? So the China decided to rebuttal and say, what? I know you ain't talking for what you're doing to the so-called blacks over there in America. Bring it out. Other countries know what happened to us. Other countries know that what? The transatlantic slave trade did exist. And guess what? God left it in the Bible so you would know. Read. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So what it's talking about here is that this is Moses talking to the Israelites. This is after we came out of Egypt, right? Now, you know, y'all know the story of Egypt, right? You seen the movie Prince of Egypt? They have fasted, but it ain't 100%, right? But basically what happened was the Most High destroyed Egypt at that time and brought us out of there. Right? So here he's saying you're going you're gonna to go into Egypt again with ship. Now how do we come out of Egypt? I'm going to ask you. How do we leave Egypt? No. How do, how do we leave Egypt? You saw the movie. How do we leave Egypt? We walked out of Egypt. When the Most High delivered Israel from Egypt, they walked out. Right? Remember, he split the Red Sea. Bring it out. They walked out of Egypt on dry land. Bring it out. They walked out of Egypt. You not familiar with that story? Well, we're going to get you familiar with it. They walked out of Egypt on dry land, right? So now, give me what Egypt is. So we're going to show what Egypt is, right? Because the true name of that land is Mizraim. It ain't really Egypt. But, you know, Esau started giving names to everything, naming it what they want to name it. But at the end of the day, it's not really Egypt. Egypt actually means something. Give me that. This is the book of Exodus. Exodus, chapter 20, and verse 2. Read. I am the Lord thy God, which I brought thee out of the land of Egypt. So I want to point out that he said the Lord thy God. I want y'all to pay attention to the words. The words like thy and your. Let you know, those are possessive pronouns. Let you know that what? God belong to you and you and you. Not belonging to everybody else on the planet. He ain't the God of the world, right? Because for something to be your God, that means what? It, it governs how you make decisions, how you live your life, Bring it how out. you dress. That is the definition of a God. It, it governs how you make decisions, Bring how you treat your brother and your sister. If you're going to shoot them down in the street or you're going to go and correct them to make sure that they're not in sin. That is the definition of a God. He governs your very existence. Read. Bring it out. I am the Lord thy God. Your God. Which have brought thee out of the house, out of the land of Egypt. What is Egypt? Out of the house of bondage. Slavery. Egypt only means bondage and slavery. Go back to Deuteronomy 28. Read. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So what he's saying is, if you continue to break these commandments, you're going back to slavery. But this time, you're going on slave ships. How do we get to America? How, how did blacks get to America? By boat, slave ships. Would you agree? You familiar with history? Would you agree? So is this not one of the ways? That I did? Who did that happen to? First off, let's get there. Who did that happen to? Who, who went into slavery on ships? Because everybody did. 
The blacks when it's right? Would you agree? Chinese ain't going to no, no slavery on no slave ship. In fact, we were slaves over there too. Would Bring it agree? out. White people ain't going on slave ships nowhere. Bring it out. Would you agree? So who is it talking about? It's talking about you, right? It's talking about you, right? So who are you? What are you? A what? You an Israelite, right? Bring it out. Your right. brother brought out laws and things that you're supposed to keep to, to keep your nationality and your heritage, right? Because our nationality and heritage ain't eating chitlins, right? That ain't nothing but what? Taking slave food and making it taste better because we got sick of eating terrible stuff. That stuff is not part of our culture. Bring right? it out. Walking down pan sagging, that's not part of our culture. Bring he it gave up. you fringes earlier, right? This is part of our culture, and it's a reason for this, right? This is how you know that God, you know, this Bible is your God because you're doing what he says do. This is how you know. Let's pick something else out that we can identify. Give me a 28 and 32. Watch this. And you tell me who this happened to. Read. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. Who did that happen to and when? You're wrong. Go. Tell me. When? During slavery, right? In fact, it's even happening to the Native Americans right now. It's happening to them right now. What's happening when they're coming up to the border trying to escape the curses that's happening to them down there? When they get to the border, what happens to the families? Right now, what happens? Huh? No, they separating them. What are they doing? They turning the adults back and they doing what? They snatching up the kids Bring and it putting out. them in cages. Bring it out. These curses are still happening to our people. This is how you can identify who you are. You understand? Still going on right now. Even now, Biden's still doing the same thing. And it started with Obama. The very one everybody thought was supposed to come help. Yeah, Obama in office. He's going to come and help save our people. Only thing that's going to save our people is coming back and keeping these commandments and knowing your nationality. That's right. Nothing else is going to save us. Coming together as one. Read. And thy eyes shall look and fail with longing for them. So right now, the parents, you even see they got them on the news right now doing news interviews. Don't know where they child at, what facility they in, wishing they can hold them, wishing they can see them. Child's dying in their care. It's proof they don't care about our people. Them the Israelites, that's proof they the Israelites. Why? Because they fit these curses, read. All the day long, and there shall be no might in thy hand. Meaning they can't do nothing to get them back. No military might. No economic might, no money, no kind of might to get them back. You can't afford the lawyer, and guess what? Ain't no other nationality gonna fight on your behalf to get your children back. Bring it out. When we look at what's happening to us today. We thought this stuff was over in 1960. We thought we thought Martin Luther King marched it out, right? We thought that finished it. We thought he stumped. He, we thought he stumped everything straight and fresh, right? We thought they would see us as equal, that we'd be treated the same way. Guess what? What the news tell you? Uh uh. That's God letting you know that guess what? Ain't nobody gonna save you but me. And the only way I'm gonna save is you gotta keep my commandments. Because guess what? A lot of us is taught that, you know, church tells you love God. It's a church on every corner, but our communities have not gotten any better. Am I right? Bring it on. Nothing has gotten any better. People still getting killed. People still getting murdered. Agnes been paying tithes for the last 35 years, still waiting on her press down, shaking together, running over, and still taking the bus. Pass the line. It's a real change that's supposed to happen. And guess what? It ain't something that he says. It's something that we're supposed to do to change. So if you love God, give me John 14 and 15. Because I want to get on the part with love God. Because everybody say they love God, right? Everybody got fuzzy feelings and have good thoughts when they thinking about Jesus, right? But the church teaches you that God is here to support you and your dreams, right? All I want to do is be acknowledged. God, God destroyed the planet except for eight people. He ain't worried about you just acknowledging him. He got something that he wants you to do as Israelites read. This is the book of John, chapter 14 and verse 15. Bring it out. If ye love me. If you what? If you love me. Mind you, this is Christ talking. He said what? If ye love me. Read. Keep my commandments. What? Commandments if there are none. That sounds like a requirement. Is that not a requirement? So ain't no just come as you are, do whatever you want to do, and you're going to make it because you look up every now and then and crack a smile. That's not how this works. That's not how the God of this Bible works. Maybe seize your boat. 
Maybe one Jesus. Bring it out. God in this Bible. The pastors ain't bringing that part out. Why? Because they're going to lose members. You ain't going to pay if somebody came and started hurting your feelings. So you know that. Guess what? You got to straighten up. It's a requirement for you, Israelite, for you specifically. That's something you have to do. Bring it out. He said, if ye love me, you will keep my commandments. That word love. Now we know that love ain't whatever you want it to be, right? You can't go beating off on a woman telling her you love her. She ain't gonna recognize that as love, correct? But if ye love me, you will keep my commandments. Now he went over what sin is, right? You remember what he said, what sin? I'm gonna say thank you. What you got? What you got? You, you explain. I said, come on, get it for you. What is sin? Lies. Well, that's 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 one. But in general, if somebody came and asked you what sin was, how would you tell them according to the Bible? What would you say? Say it again? Yeah. Hey, so that's the wages of sin. That's the wages of committing sin. But the actual definition, let's see what the Bible says, right? Because the pastor say, uh, you're not doing what I told you to do. Wrong. Read. This is the book of 1 John, chapter 3 and verse 4. Whosoever committed sin. So he's going to say what sin is now. So, so whoever commits sin, what you do is transgresses also the law. Stop. Transgress. What is transgress? We do what? Now speak up. I can't hear you a lion, bro. Come on, speak up. You good? To go against, right? What do you got? To transgress, though. You ain't got to be deep, just, just what you got. No, transgress ain't follow. What do you got? To do something negative. To, do, to transgress means to do the opposite of. So to grant, transgress means to break. Transgression. You broke the law. Read. Whosoever committed sin transgresses also the law. So who, who, whoever commits sin, you transgress the law. And then just to, just to stick it home to make sure you don't misunderstand what he's saying, read. For sin is the transgression of the law. Sin is the breaking of the law. That's in the book of 1 John, New Testament. So guess what? That means that what? There are commandments. Christ said, if you love me, do what? If you love me, do what? What did it say? I want to make sure you listen. Keep my commandments. And he gave, right, follow my rules, right? And he gave y'all some commandments. He went over the beard. He went over about your head. He didn't bring over the head being covered, but we don't let, what do we got? Let's go over uh, the head being covered real quick. Because I remember he told you you took it off, and you took it off all phrases, but we got to prove it, right? We got to show you in the Bible that you're supposed to uncover your head. But so far, I got a echo from the one car down the street. Say it again? I got a echo from the one car down the street. Hey, bro, you, you got to do what you got to do, but we can't, we can't encourage you to break no laws or anything like that. But, hey, it's a number on the back of that flyer. It's a website. Give us a call. Hook up with us. All right, be safe. Read. This is the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 11 and verse 3. Bring it out. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of, of the woman is the man. So what's happening right here is God has given us the order. Because we as Israelites, guess what? We got an order to our houses. Ain't no just ain't whoever make the most money run it. That's not how it works. So right now, God has given us the order of how our nation works. Continue. And the head of Christ is God. So the head of Christ is God. So right there, that's smashing the Trinity doctrine. God and Christ are two different people. They are not all in one. How can God be the head of himself? Common sense, right? Read. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered. So praying and prophesying is guess what? Prayer and prophesying is just bringing out the scripture. It ain't sitting up here, you know, telling the future, pulling a Miss Cleo. It's every time you read this Bible, guess what? You prophesying. Whenever this Bible coming out, somebody in the vicinity prophesying, head got to come uncovered. Read. Having his head covered, dishonored his head. So anybody who got their head covered while the scriptures is coming out or in prayer, the scriptures say you dishonoreth your head. Now who did the scripture say our head was? Who's the, who's the man's head? Christ. 
So every time your head covered when a scripture coming out, you dishonoring Christ. You can't say you love him and then dishonor him at the same time, right? Just Bring it out. So all praise to the most high, you remove it, right? So this is you learning. Read. Bring it out. Every man pray or prophesy, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. Read. But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered, dishonoreth her head. So if the woman is praying and prophesying, meaning if the scriptures is coming out of she in prayer, and ain't nothing covering her head, she dishonoring you, and in turn, is dishonoring Christ, right? Which is proof that what? The husband got to keep his house in check and keep his wife in check. These are, this is why you see what? The woman's head is always covered. They might think that's a little small, minute thing, but it's not. It's a big deal to God. Give me Matthew 5 and 7. I'm going to prove it. It's a big deal to Christ. It might be small to you, but it's a big deal to Christ. And I'm going to prove that. We read earlier that what? The wages of sin is death, right? The sin is the breaking of the law, right? It didn't say, well, if you break a small law, it's okay. I'll let you slide. No, it says breaking of the law is death. And it might not be instant. It might be a disease. It might be diabetes. Does that not happen to our people? It might be all kind of stuff. STDs, dying slowly. It might be COVID-19. Bring it out. Read. This is the book of Mac Matthew chapter 5 and verse 17. Think not that I came to destroy the law. So this is Christ letting you know to once again crush the doctrine that Christ came to that you ain't got to keep no commandments. He actually literally sat here and said it. Think not that I came to destroy the law. Why? Because you knew our people, when we simple, we'll say something crazy like that. So he smashed it right then and there. Read. All the prophets. Let you know that the prophets that's in here, the prophecies concerning who we are, what we just read, Deuteronomy chapter 28, 68, coming here on slave ships. He let you know he ain't come to squash none of that. Read. I am not come to destroy, but Fulfilled. Which means he came to make sure it happens. And everything that he's doing is making sure that he fulfilling prophecy. Which means that what? He with the book, not against the book. Read. For verily I say unto you. So he's saying, truly, truly, I say it unto you. So when Christ say verily, he like, hey, listen up. You know what I'm saying? Real talk. Read. Till heaven and earth pass. He said, till heaven and earth pass. Now you we on earth, right? The sky is still up there, right? We still here, right? Read. One jot or one tittle. Which means not a comma, not a period. Read. So in no wise pass from the law. That means that not even so much as a smidge little comment gonna pass from the law. Which means you got to keep every last bit of it according to the scriptures. Read. Till all be fulfilled. Till all be fulfilled. All we still dealing with Deuteronomy 28 today. Bring it out. Still getting shot down in the street. We still got single parent households. Our men still weak, not doing their job, raising their children and running their houses. Is our men still not marrying our women? Do our people still don't even know they Israelites, correct? All is not fulfilled yet. That means that what? Once again, if he loved me, keep my commandments. <laughs>